Good morning everyone. Thanks for joining in today. In this season I have been discussing different types of hernias and so far I have discussed epigastric hernias, umbilical hernias and spagalian hernia. If you want to know what a hernia is then I leave a link below for you to have a look at and it will explain to you in very simple terminology, very simple words what a hernia is actually. Today I'm going to talk about a very common type of hernia and a very important hernia called incisional hernia or a surgical hernia. Why is it called an incisional or a surgical hernia? Because this is the only type of hernia which happens through a surgical scar. So when a surgeon makes an incision on the tummy, which is a cut on the tummy to do an operation, that scar can sometimes break down or become very weak and through which the hernia comes out. So let's discuss this further. As most of us know that abdominal operations are very common. They are performed for different conditions like appendicitis, gallbladder problems, bowel problems, stomach problems, blood vessel problems, etc. etc. So very common operations to be performed in general hospitals. Between 5 and 30% of these scars that are made for these operations can cause an incisional hernia. Why is there such a big difference? 5 is 1 in 20 chance, 30 is 1 in 3 chance, which is quite high incidence of developing an incisional hernia. Bigger the scar on the tummy, the bigger the chance of having an incisional hernia because there is more area for the scar to break down. That is why keyhole operations, which are performed through very tiny scars on the tummy, have a very low incidence of incisional hernias. It doesn't mean it does not happen with keyhole operations, but the incidence is far lower than big incisions on the tummy. Also, emergency operations have a slightly higher incidence of developing incisional hernias as compared to elective operations. To understand why incisional hernias happen, it is very important to understand how incisions or scars are made during an operation. The muscles on our abdominal wall, they run in two different directions. In the middle, the muscle which we call the rectus abdominis muscle or also called the six pack muscle, which you can see on very strong muscular people with cuts on the, in front of the tummy. The fibers run straight up and down. The muscles on the side of the tummy, the fibers run across and obliquely. So they go this way and on this side they go this way. Now, this is how the incisions are made. If the surgeon is making an incision in the midline, then they will make an up and down incision. If they are making an incision on the side of the tummy, like for an appendix over here, then they will make an oblique incision, which goes in the direction of the muscles. They try not to make an oblique incision in the middle of the tummy, and I'll explain to you why in a second. If the surgeons, especially the gynae operations, are performed through an across scar in the lower part of the tummy, like this one. Now, why are scars made in these different directions? The reason is, if the scar is made in the direction of the muscle fibers, so in the midline, when the muscles pull, so these muscles which are going straight up and down, they are like ropes. So when the patient lifts their head and do any exercise, when the muscles pull, they shut the muscles. So when the muscles pull up and down, say when the patient is trying to get up off the bed or off the chair or from the floor or walking around, lifting weight, these fibers which are going up and down, they will pull up and pull down and they will shut any space between the muscles. On the side of the tummy, if the incision is made up and down because the muscles are pulling in this direction. If the incision is made up and down, when the muscle pulls right and left, the incision will open up even more if it's made up and down. That is why the incision is made obliquely in the direction of the muscles. So when the muscles pull left and right, 
the incision itself will shut like a shutter same thing happens lower down now keyhole operations are a bit more different because keyhole scar is so tiny that whichever direction the muscle pull it makes very little difference to having a hernia through the scar if the scar is closed properly or even if it's done in the right place then the chance of hernia developing is very very small so what increases the risk of developing an incision hernia any condition which is going to make our muscles weak or put them under too much pressure or stretch them too much will increase the risk of incision hernia so like infection diabetes malnutrition which means patient's nutrition is very poor anything that raises the abdominal pressure which means abdomen becomes too big and too tight soon after an operation like obesity too much fluid in the tummy constipation too much gas in the bowel like ileus etc that can give rise to the scar breaking down or becoming too weak or too stretched out and resulting in an incisional hernia so those are the commonest conditions commonest causes that is why incisional hernias are more common after emergency operations as compared to elective operations because the patients are more predisposed to infections they are malnourished their intraabdominal pressure might be very very high ladies following pregnancy who had a previous operation done not that long ago like c section or something because of the pregnancy the muscles have become very stretched out very weak and that can give rise to an incisional hernia so how are incisional hernias diagnosed incisional hernia diagnosis is relatively easy unless the patient is very obese examination can be a bit hard however most of them especially sizable incisional hernias can be diagnosed on examination only very small incisional hernias which are difficult to feel or the patient is very overweight they can be a bit hard to examine and in those patient ultrasound scan or ct or an mri scan helps in diagnosing an incisional hernia so what are the complications of incisional hernias incisional hernias because the scar is bulging under the skin can be quite ugly second thing they can cause discomfort and pain especially very large incisional hernias also pain is a sign of obstruction or strangulation both of these are quite serious complications of any hernia including incisional hernia and that can make the patient very unwell and sick what is the treatment of incisional hernias some incisional hernias which are causing very little discomfort to the patient have got no signs of obstruction or strangulation and the patient is perhaps not very fit for the operation as i explained earlier some of these patients can be quite unwell they can be quite malnourished might have risk factors like uncontrolled diabetes blood pressure obesity etc if the incisional hernia is not causing many problem then it can be left alone however large incisional hernias or incisional hernias which are causing pain discomfort obstruction strangulation will require an operation very large incisional hernias in the tummy will require usually an open operation which is reopening the old scar repairing it either with non absorbable sutures or using a mesh repair on top to strengthen the weak muscles smaller incisional hernias can be repaired with keyhole operation again by using either sutures or a small mesh to repair the hole in the abdominal wall to repair the hernia i hope you found this video informative if you did then please do remember to like and subscribe and support our channel thank you for watching and until next time i'll see you very soon you take care